everyone. Hello. And welcome to Kirsty and Bryony's comfort zone. I am Kirsty and I am Bryony and today we are joined by none other than Chris Trott of both Hat Films and High Rollers and that weird viral video you all know on the internet <laughs> only joking here he is it's trapped there he Welcome. is oh my god i was like what viral video <laughs> what am i in i was racking my brain it's is... like what else am i known for <laughs> Hello. This is how we like to ease people into their comfort zone. Just shocking By throwing me. them out of it. <laughs> Jeez, I was so, nice and calm. <laughs> we have been trying to pin you down for a while because we hear that you have a very exciting, super spicy, it's not spicy, just that you've, you've had a dream. I've had just a wonder, dream. One dream. I've had a dream. One dream in his whole life. <laughs> well, it's so rare for me to have it. A cohesive dream, like a dream that has like a story to it. It's so mm -hmm. rare for yeah. me. And I'm sure you've had other people on that have had awesome dreams, but for me, for me, this is awesome for me. So it might be bad in comparison. I don't know. I think it will be fine. We've had people on that have had no dreams before as well. Yeah. So well, what's the point? Why would you even what's go the on point? <laughs> <laughs> Why would you go on comfort zone without a dream? Yeah, Xylus. <laughs> wow, should've, called We should have just kicked him <laughs> straight off. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I've got this dream. So how do you want to play this? How do you want to do it? Do you want a well, teaser? Have you... Do you want a subtitle? Oh. Do you want a tagline? No. <laughs> have like a little trailer to the dream. <laughs> yeah. Um. I mean, well, I guess we usually start off by asking people, how do you feel? I mean, it's too late at this point, usually. But how do you feel about like dreams? Do you think they... Like, are you weirded out by them or do you have, like, do you think that they're just nonsense and they don't mean anything or do you feel like they, like, some people just hate talking about dreams at yeah. all, but how do you feel about, about dreams? Okay, so I had a strong stance a few years ago only because <laughs> people love to tell me their dream stories and I was like, <laughs> I don't give a shit about your dreams. <laughs> Because they didn't happen. <laughs> but as time goes on and I'm hearing more dreams, I'm starting to change into more of a, this is very interesting. I like it from a scientific point of view in terms yeah. of what is your brain doing and why is it doing it that way? And why mm -hmm. is it existing in that state while your body is kind of shut down? I find that fascinating. So there is a, a fascinating element to it. Yeah. So that's where I'm at right now. What is it that made people want to tell you their dreams? Uh, well, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I literally don't know. But I've, I've had... To the point where you were getting annoyed with it. Yeah, <laughs> it really was. Like, oh, today I, I had this dream, by the way. Um, and it's completely oh, relevant again. to me, by the way. It's not like there's no like hook for me. As in, <laughs> yeah. Riley, for example, likes to tell me that I'm in her dreams a lot which is great yeah. because I want to hear what I've been up to, what nefarious mm -hmm. things I've been doing in Brownie's dreams. That's fine. Well, you're in one of you're in one of Kirsty's dreams as a horse. That was one of the first ever True, yeah, you turned into a, a horse which turned into a motorbike yeah. one time. I did hear about that. Mm. Was <laughs> that I was a while ago now. Was I like a stallion? Was I like a big horse or like a a tiny horse? Mm, I think Probably a big horse. You were on a stage, I think. You were on a stage and then you turned onto a motorbike and then you just sort of zoomed off <laughs> dramatically. What kind of bike? Like an old school vintage bike? Like a Harley Davidson? Um, yeah, yeah, I think something like that. Oh, it low wasn't, rider, yeah. hell yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. it was a cool one. <laughs> See, these kind of dreams I like because they're about me. <laughs> so, <laughs> That's it. But I've heard yeah. loads of dreams from uh, my audience, for example. They like to tell me about yeah. their dreams. And I'm like, I, first of all, I don't know who you are. And second of all, this is entirely made up fictional scenario that you've just informed me about. It's like someone telling you their, their recent D&D &D adventure as if you were there, you know? Yeah. That sort yeah. of thing. I do Either that all way. the time. Oops. At first I thought you were going to say, first of all, how dare you talk to me? <laughs> first of all, <laughs> yeah, I'm a lord. I had a doctor. And a doctor. Oh, we didn't say that at the start. You guys we didn't. didn't introduce There's no me. Context. Like, oh. 
I request oh, to be introduced as like Your Highness, His Royal Majesty, Lord, Lord and Doctor. Doctor. Sir. It didn't happen. It reminds me of um when my sister this is a curveball, when my sister was pregnant with my Is niece, this a dream story? Because I'm I, not interested. <laughs> no, this is real. And my dad was very much like I'm not going to be a soppy granddad. And I was like, what are you going to have her call you? And he was like, sir. But now he's like the soppiest granddad in the world. <laughs> Always the way. Always the way. It's yeah. like when you see mm-hmm. um, like older parents or something like that, it's like, I never want a cat. You can have a cat, sure, yeah. but I'll never have a cat. And then they end up being like the cutest, snuggliest cat owner. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. Speaking of uh, animals, do mm. you think that your doggo and catto dream do you ever like watch them do you watch them when they're sleeping and wonder what's going on in their their little heads um with mochi my cute fluffy japanese spits i don't get a choice because she chooses to sleep underneath my side of the bed and last (laughs) night literally i got woken up by her dream of constantly barking um, but it's like that bark, <laughs> dream bark. Have you heard dogs dream bark where it's not like a full yeah, bark? Yeah. It's like a muted, like, <laughs> yeah, it's like they're, they're barking through their mouth, but their mouth's not opening, um, or it's opening a little bit. So she was doing that. She was twitching. She was definitely chasing something. So yeah, Aww. absolutely. They dream. And, uh, it's, Aww. it's amazing to watch. Uh, not amazing to wake up at like 4am. <laughs> yeah. Because she was really going for it and whatever she was barking at, she needed to be heard, you know? <laughs> but yeah, they absolutely oh, dream. The rabbits dream, have you noticed? Yeah, like, um, I mostly notice if Jerry has had a bad dream because he will just wake up grumpy about <laughs> really? something. And I'm really? like, I do not know what's happened, but he'll just all of a sudden be like, He's a bit miffed about something, and I'm like, it Aww. must have been that you dreamt something. Whereas Fionn, she digs in her sleep occasionally, so I think she just nice. causes chaos in her dreams all the time. Just digging you just, holes. She fall asleep, and then you just start to see her like wobble from side to side, and then you just see her little hands appear, and she just be like, dig, 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 dig. <laughs> what if they've got this. linked dreams? Oh, they like visit each other's just dreams, or, annoying yeah. him and his dreams. Just digging <laughs> holes for Jerry to fall into. That's why Jerry's so grumpy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and he wakes up grumpy. Though he woke up. He was in a really good mood this morning. And genuinely, he did a little binky, like just a little jump in the air. And it made me so happy that I almost cried. And I was like, what's wrong with me? <laughs> <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. Just a, nope. a beautiful boy. Just a little um, happy guy. I've got a curveball. Have you oh, discussed yeah. conjoined twins in dreams? No. Oh, we've, we've if, discussed twins, but I don't think we've had talked about conjoined twins. Yeah, conjoined yeah, twins that s- share like a, an immune system mm. or something like that, but have two separate heads. Do yeah. they share dreams? Are they in each other's dreams? Do they have different dreams? Know. That's a, that's a whole really other know. podcast, right? How does <laughs> it? How does it work with like? I guess if it's separate brains. But experiencing the same things throughout the day, I guess that would make you more likely to have dreams about the same thing anyway, just because you've probably got those same triggers throughout the day. Yeah, but then you've got to think, like, know. they share the same nervous system and then their body yeah. shuts down at the same time, I, one would assume. And then do they enter the same dream state? Do their brains, like, cross over at any point? That's the point. Would you have to fall asleep at the same time? Or could one yeah. of you still just be like up scrolling on your phone? Oh my god, yeah, this is right. This is a whole other podcast. I guess I like, feel like they could sleep independently of each other, but I, I don't know. It's it's fascinating, and so many none questions. of us are scientists, so we no. can't answer the question. <laughs> no, exactly. No. I'm just trying to Google it desperately. <laughs> oh, I should be doing that, but I know I'm just off the top. The sign of, my head. of a true scientist. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, well, would you like to tell us your dream yeah. that I, I you will. had with your yes, single I've head? Just got my, <laughs> I've got my notes. And uh, this is literally uh, writing it down verbatim. Verbatim? Verbatim? Verbatim. Verbatim. <laughs> yeah. verbatim. Uh, in my sleepy state. So I'm going to try and make it coherent as best as I can. Oh. 
Oh, so you actually woke up and wrote it? That, yeah, I think I was like, too this, sleepy to... I woke up still kind of in my dreamy state where like, I think I've, I think I've discovered a new, I'll, I'll explain. Okay. But I was so <laughs> okay. excited that I had to write it down because I think I had a discovery. But obviously <laughs> now looking like an hour after the dream, I was like, oh, it's just a silly dream. But at yeah. the time I was like, oh my God. Anyway, uh, the title I've given this is um, Granddad and the Past Future. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I I'm know, hooked. right? <laughs> so my dream started with seeing my granddad and knowing he hasn't got long left. It starts off pretty sad. And we go to his little yeah. small house where he's alone. Everything's old fashioned, but very purple and red. I don't know why I'm describing the decor, but I ask about some really eccentric chairs with an elaborate velvet cover and strange covers, which are both extremely old fashioned, but also very quirky. And my granddad, uh, he says they're from Napoli uh, or Naples, oh. uh, which feels like a genuine connection. So I have this really strong connection with my granddad for the first time ever in this dream. Like, oh my God, we've got something in common. This is really nice. And then we continue to reminisce and uh, we bring him back to his old home and we look through all his things. We mention how much, uh, it's mentioned by mum how much money he saved because he lived through the post-war depression. That's just a little insert. Um, <laughs> there's a point, I'm not sure when it happens, when I'm taking care of him as he falls asleep on a plane. So we're in a plane now oh. and he's falling asleep. Almost like we rushed to get onto this plane. And then an attendant goes around holding a pile of opened passports, reading out names, and then knowingly reading out my granddad's name, her face knowing him warmly, like a well-loved local and old acquaintance that frequently flies on this plane, and gently hands me his passport. I show granddad as uh, she wrote a very nice personal message to him in it, referencing his niche interest in some sort of sci-fi franchise. Something, again, we both seem to have uh, in common and like and acknowledge. So I'm like, wow, I'm really getting on with my granddad in his final days uh, on this plane. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so now I'm in a car traveling, as my mum explains, obviously with sadness and emotion that there'll be a lot of money after he passes away. Uh, we are then at his old home when I live next door to him. Uh, because I used to live next door to my grandparents. That's a whole other thing, but that mm -hmm. generally was real. Yeah. Uh, and it's just as I remembered it. We look around at all his old belongings. I see some of my paintings and sculptures on display that I never knew that he put up. And we laugh and reminisce as a family, and it's really nice. Uh, I ask how he feels about coming home again, and he suggests he stays with us for a bit. It feels very emotional, like I'm speaking to him properly, more than I have ever done before. Coming out of my shell, expressing myself more than usual. And then we comment on the fish tank that's still there. And they're still swimming about. Um, and there's a weird fish in there. And I'll get to that later because it actually links, which is nuts. <laughs> um, so one granddad is telling me more and more about his past around a table. I somehow get taken into his past. And this is where it gets insane. Okay. What? So imagine this whole setup is basically I'm following my granddad. He's in his final years. We are on a plane. Someone on the plane, the attendant knows who he is and gives him the passport. And then we're back in his old house where he used to live next to us. And it yeah. turns out we've got so much more in common than I ever thought. And then I go into his past as he's telling me about it. So I'm now in a, a crazy immersive vision Firstly, seeing the moment as a teen, his teens, in some sort of camp or boot camp surrounded by other kids and a bullish teacher where he confronts him and admits doing something embarrassing and damaging. The teacher is furious and the other kids erupt in chaos like an uncontrolled class, laughing at my young granddad. Curiously, I can't make out entirely what he's saying, but I get the gist. I notice that other family members are watching this experience, like my brother, who is helping correct what I'm hearing. So he's like standing next to me, like in, uh, you know, like Christmas Carol, where we're kind of like observing. Oh, yeah. I've got like other family members who are like ghostly apparitions saying like, oh, he said this in this moment. I don't know why, but that's just a little detail. Uh, <laughs> uh, there's also another narrator of some kind explaining this is the moment he destroys his ego and sets him on his journey. Wow. So there's like this overarching <laughs> voice. 
which kind of penetrates through everything that says that. Uh, and yeah. then I'm kind of whisked away and I'm now climbing uh, a Mount Everest style cliffside. So it's like really, really cold, loads of wind and rain or whatever brushing over my face. And I am my granddad, by the way. Um, there's bricks that I'm like gripping onto that have names on them. They're like milestones of other people's names that have engraved on these bricks. It's like, this is the furthest this person has ever got on this cliffside, for example. Okay. And I'm like my granddad trying to push beyond that. Um, this is wild. I'm reading it back for the first time in like a few months, by the way. So it's just <laughs> like, oh my God, what the hell? Um, I see him reaching his furthest goal with his wife cheering him on. His wife obviously being my grandma, but I say his wife. Uh, but I'm there too. <laughs> And I see his title with his name engraved on it. And I still recognize him as granddad. It's all connected to me still. It's still my granddad. I'm then transported again. Or rather the world around me changes. I sort of fall knowingly into a dusty street somewhere in Egypt. Oh, okay. And there's a recognizable <laughs> tall buildings in the distance that look like Bristol, but it's not. I added that for no reason. Yeah. Uh, I'm observing, but also <laughs> present for, I think, my celebrity granddad at this point. Like, he's really well known. Uh, showing his discovery of some webbed leaf. And this is his major discovery. And he starts explaining it. Uh, then a customer takes this strange seahorse-like fish, which was in that fish tank, by the way. <gasps> suspended in water. Oh gosh. And he's, like, showing it to my granddad. Who is me? I'm in his perspective. Um, yeah. From its, it's like orangey with red, pale in areas with black speckles. Like I could see this in like vivid detail. You know, when you have one of those dreams, it's like hyper detailed and vivid. Mm -hmm. It's like one of those. So from its mouth of this seahorse in this like submerged tank is a windy metal rod that curves in like crazy loops and stuff and goes all the way around and back into it in its rear. And it's placed on the fish, and I know it's placed there on purpose, and the fish can only remain in that position. And then this, this strange seahorse starts undulating continually, releasing a bead of orangey-red liquid that sticks to this little, I guess it's like a wire, and it starts like moving around all these loops and stuff and going back around and then coming back into the fish, and it keeps doing that. It's just crazy. Um, and I'm like transfixed on this thing. Uh, the customer clearly hasn't done this before. He's like asking the granddad, like, what is this? And what is your discovery? And how does this all work? He knows he has to ingest the liquid somehow, but it's all so intricate. And the metal is way too close to the strange fish. Um, I, I talk about this fish for a very long time, so I'm going to skip <laughs> over it. But I'm fascinated by this fish and the seahorse-like creature that's like undulating this liquid. My granddad's very knowing. He's like, I discovered this. I know what this is all about. And then apparently it's hazy at this point, but I feel like I'm being tugged and torn through time itself. I think I ingested one of those beads, okay? So <gasps> I've, yeah, I've taken God. the bead. The world is tearing away and I'm thrown into a strange futuristic dark corridor with really weird billboards and things all around me. I think someone's accompanying me hurriedly for a while. I have no idea where I am. I think I'm trying to blend in and not have anyone discover me. There's a pain in my head and neck, like something's in there messing with my senses and making it hard to focus. And I'm running through these strange corridors. I find someone who finally understands why I'm here, but doesn't explain very much. I'm just given some device secretly, like I wasn't supposed to receive it or have people around me notice. Uh, it's like a device that has a list of information, like titles that I tap, and more information reveals itself when I tap on them. The top article, I think, is about the liquid from the fish, but it's confusing and about some parasite or something. Eventually, I'm taken to a hideout with some cyberpunk-esque people like a gang of rebels who talk about themselves and dismissively discuss me um, and how I obviously have this thing in me that is causing problems that needs to be removed. It's like they know why I'm here, but don't really explain and just get on with things like this isn't completely crazy. Is this making sense so far? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I'm picturing okay. the Matrix when yeah. they take the thing out of Neo's belly button. I'm picturing Baldur's Gate <laughs> with the tadpoles. <laughs> yeah, I mean, could be something like that. Uh, and then I'm somehow flicking back to current day in the desert with my granddad showing me areas in the ground in the desert that he discovered buried under strange tubes starting his lifelong search. 
So he's kind of like showing me how he came to this discovery in the desert of like, look at all these strange like buildings and things that are underneath the desert that are in ruins. And then I'm taken back to the strange futuristic place again. Everything's wild, like the computers seemingly project wild and abstract shapes. Like I'm seeing completely unique and new technology here. And I remember it super vividly in my dream. Like it's very strange how I kind of came up with this tech. Anyway, lots of projections and stuff. I somehow discovered as an imposter by some sort of easel, evil entity that has a surreal blue face that isn't human. Uh, he looks like M. Bison from Street Fire. <laughs> kind of. <laughs> it's like that outfit, you know, but with a strange blue face. He belittles and questions me like I'm nothing more than just some fun annoyance. I try my best to tell them that I'm from a different time. And I figure it out as I'm speaking to him that I'm from their future. Oh. I'm seeing their final days at a time far, far younger on this planet. And as I explain that the planet, as I literally see it manifest in front of me as I struggle to convey that our future is nowhere near this advanced. And I'm laughed at and mocked at by this person, um, but ask more questions because they're clearly entertained by what I'm saying. Um, I ask them what computers they're running everything on. And they're like, <laughs> obviously, it's quantum. And I'm like, what? <laughs> uh, we don't have that. We literally don't. We don't have that technology yet. And they're just like laughing at me, but it's all dismissed. Uh, and then things get more and more erratic and panic, like the world is tearing away from me again. And I'm trying to explain myself in like shouting through the wind kind of way, like just trying to get it through to them that if they carry on this path, their whole civilization on this planet is going to destroy itself and our civilization is going to flourish from it and no one's going to remember you. And then I wake up. Oh my God. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Such an adventure. That was so intense. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Oh my goodness, where to begin? Where, <laughs> where to, to begin? begin? <laughs> yeah. So, have you ever been to Napoli or Egypt? I've not been to Egypt. I have been to Napoli. Okay. Did you like the chairs? <laughs> In Nothing particular? to do. No, I don't remember seeing any chairs there. <laughs> Not one. So, not not a they single don't have chair. Chairs. They were completely chairless. <laughs> oh my god! Just wondering what the connection would be between the uh, the chairs at the beginning. I yeah. mean, I think like the things that stood out for me that I sort of made a, a note of throughout were, yeah. I think like I get this thing where I start thinking if I'm having a particularly like oh, I feel like not a grown-up. I don't feel like an adult. Mm -hmm. How do I cope? I start thinking, what were my parents and my grandparents like when they were my age at the moment? Okay. So I wonder yeah. if like part of you was thinking like, oh, what would my granddad have been doing when he was my age? Yeah. Because... Mm -hmm. They didn't have the internet, so I guess they climbed mountains and went to Egypt. And <laughs> <Yeah. stuff. laughs> Made fascinating discoveries, yeah. <laughs> what else did people do before the internet existed? Yeah. Must it have been sounded like, like quite the adventurer. Like he was famous, he was in Egypt looking at secrets. He had this whole and... other life that I had knew nothing about, yeah. Yeah. Which in a way is like, that is what parents and grandparents are like, because they do have this... You sort of think that they came into being at the same time as we did, but you forget they've had these like decades of life. It's a good before. point, and I don't think we realize this until adulthood, right? Until we start going yeah. through those same experiences, They're like, oh my god, my parents did this and had all this before it. It is very strange. The other thing I found very interesting is that you specifically said a seahorse, yeah, because they are like the only sea creature i can think of where it's like very um like the male is very nurturing and looks after the little one so just the fact it was a seahorse and your granddad i was like oh is that is oh. he like is he the seahorse taking care of you Aww. or something but Maybe. that's all i know about seahorses he made me take drugs <laughs> technically oh, oh okay, okay. <laughs> so whether that's a nurturing thing or not <laughs> i don't know <laughs> you take your vitamins Oh, it could be vitamins. Super Ted shaped yeah, vitamins. Just, just vitamins. There were there were a lot of um, colors as well in your dream. I, I noticed like there were lots of reds and purples. I think 
yeah. uh, in your granddad's place. And then you were saying about the colors of the fish and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, lots of sort of like, I don't know, warm tones and then being in like Egypt and stuff. And it sounds like it was a really bright and vivid dream. Super vivid. Yeah. Quite rare Especially for me. towards the end, like when it all started tearing apart as well. Yeah. The fabric of time. <laughs> the fabric of time. When you dream usually, do you usually dream in first or third person? Oh, I guess usually first person. Oh, okay. So like when you were your granddad and stuff, you'd I guess that's not too out the ordinary to be like that first person perspective of like, I'm doing this. Yeah, it's just unusual that I was them and not myself, I guess, mm -hmm. would be yeah. the, the unique thing of this dream. Yeah. Like I was consciously aware that I'm inhabiting someone else's body and going through their memories, so to speak, which is pretty it just wild. Sounds so, like what did your, if you don't mind me asking, what, what did your granddad do? Was he an explorer? He was in the RAF. Oh, oh okay. So it was so, he was an engineer, uh, World War II, and he did some time in the World War. Thankfully, never on, on the battlefield, but he was an engineer uh, doing plane work and stuff like that, and he went out to Germany. So he was pretty active. Yeah. And quite smart. So I, I guess the, um, like the plane journey, I guess. Could be related. You associate. Yeah, because I, I think usually with planes... Is it about, I mean, you'll have to check the highly scientific book. I didn't even check the book. I Gassy. know what it says about planes, Bryony. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, it's a long phallic object. Uh, generally, oh. Freud gets involved with planes. Oh, sweet. Oh, yeah, yeah, we should have mentioned that Freud is a big part of both of the dream books. That yes. <laughs> okay, all right. There's a flavor to it. Yeah. And gotcha. But I, I think also just like, those sorts of journeys on any sort of transport can be just like life journeys, isn't it? It's like going from one part of your life or feeling like you're entering a new part of life. Um, mm. So I guess it could be something to do with that. And I guess in a way, like, I wonder if there's some sort of life journey or like career journey, like that sort of thing you're endeavor in endeavoring on. Is endeavoring a word? Endeavouring, we'll endeavouring, endeavor. yeah. <laughs> about right. to endeavour upon <laughs> that, like just the fact that you're so surrounded by family in all of this dream as well. Like I know when you're watching your granddad and when you are your granddad, it's like they're all. It's like you are thinking, like, what would they do, or you want the support of them, or, or something yeah. like that. Yeah. Even people that like you didn't know, like the like the air hostess, right? Like they they knew your granddad and they were really friendly. Yeah. It's, yeah, just everyone was, yeah. I've looked at planes again, and it does mention Freud, but it also says uh, the aircraft represent a desire for new experiences and excitement. Oh. So there you go. There you Ooh. go. Maybe it's a sign you want to go to Egypt. Yeah. I think it's time to go to Egypt. I'm going to start dusting around like an archaeologist seeing if there's an ancient civilization <laughs> that died. <laughs> it was at a time, I will say, where I read about it's more the science of it, like how old Earth is, right? And there, there is yeah. space because of like the way everything breaks down. Um, there's the potential, there's this huge area of like millions of years where you just can't have any trace of civilization anymore. Like even if we were to dig really far down, there's a certain okay. amount of time into the future where humans, for example, will not be able to be discovered anymore because we would have broken down into just like our bare components. Mm -hmm. Oh, and apparently because yeah. Earth is so old there's a chance it's completely you know ultra rare there's a chance that civilization could have lived and died on our planet and we would have no trace of them in the ground at all so like yeah. even before dinosaurs sort of thing right? yeah or that's ah. what I just it's more a, it was more My a science gosh. like um, analogy for like how old the planet is to put it in perspective mm -hmm. like humanity is just a tiny blip and yeah. another blip could have existed and we wouldn't be able to detect it at all nowadays we will i think humanity is going to last because of all the microplastics but uh, 
Yeah. I found that fascinating and I was kind yeah, of obsessed so with cool. that for a little bit, like thinking like, oh, that's really cool. So I think that may have influenced the whole future past ancient civilization stuff mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, that was going on. I think I do get that, like, I don't know about you two, but I have such a poor sense of time. Mm -hmm. Like when people say stuff like the time between the cowboys and this is shorter than the time between this and this and i'm just like huh oh. like i've tried doing that yiddle thing and it made me realize that i have no yep. idea when anything was or any concept of when anything <laughs> was at all i find that those um comparisons help me to be honest like without those yeah i am just completely clueless i'm just like i don't know when any of this stuff was but um, yeah but yeah i i really liked yiddle i i thought it I, I thought I was better at it than I thought it would be. <laughs> I'm sort of like there were the the Romans and then Jesus, blah 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 blah. Jane Austen. <laughs> yeah. And now today, Just a big old gap. <laughs> yeah. And Between like z zero and the 1800s. Oh my I god! I don't know what happened. <laughs> <laughs> Judas? Question mark. Judas? War of the Roses. <laughs> Do you want to know a crazy fact? Yes. About time. Yeah. Uh, Oxford University existed for hundreds of years before the Aztec Empire was founded. What? Oh, yeah, I remember hearing about this. Really? That war? Yeah, 1428. Before Wait. the Aztecs. Damn. When were the think Aztecs? Aztecs would be ancient, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. That's so weird. Yeah. I think I'm... of Aztecs as being... So wait, when was... When were the Aztecs? Because in my mind, that's like it mixed in with like mythology, like yeah. two thousand BC sort of thing. Is that is that fairly recent? So there were three uh, city states which began an alliance, and these three city states ruled the area in around the Valley of Mexico from fourteen twenty eight until they combined forces of the Spanish conquistadors oh. and their native allies. Under the Hernan Cortes defeated them in 1521. Aztec culture had rich and complex mythological and religious traditions. What? Yeah. Damn. I didn't realize it was so was... recent. Yeah. Yeah. Crazy. Yeah. And woolly mammoths were roaming the lands when Egyptians were still building the pyramids. Stuff like that. Mm -hmm. It's crazy. I'm on, the, oh I'm on an article. <laughs> <laughs> it might not be true. No, I've heard that one before. That's definitely true. Okay. I mean, I guess with mammoths, like, I can sort of, I can understand. I mean, we still have elephants, so it stands to reason we'd have hairy ones. Yeah. Yeah. Fairly Big recently. fluffy ones. Mm. Do you think if, you know, they talk about doing this thing where they're like, we found a mammoth, we can Jurassic Park the shit out of this. Do you think they should? Um... Or should they leave well enough alone? I'm kind of like in a 50-50 camp. Mm. Part of me is like, do we really understand enough to be meddling with that? But at the same time, the results of science that could come from it yeah. could be very beneficial. Like, as in reducing the impact of human, uh, you know, the industrial revolution and all that and climate change. You know, if we can help animals not go extinct by reanimating woolly mammoths, yeah. then maybe that's a good thing. But then again, we might also be messing with like, let's reintroduce woolly mammoths into the um, the chain <laughs> <laughs> and then see what happens. I watched this TED talk about um, there was this frog that went extinct in a rainforest. It was caused by like people didn't even realize they'd done it. Basically, we went there and we trampled in a new disease and it wiped out this frog. Yeah, mm. classic. And the fascinating thing about this frog was it would, when it got pregante it would actually like change its stomach into a womb oh. and keep the babies in its tum tum these were the oh, very wow. scientific words used in the ted talk yeah yeah and uh i guess then it just formed up the babies but it was like they were sort of saying like we want to bring this back because we have enough specimens that we could bring this frog back but i was like but do you just want to bring it back so you can mess with it because obviously there's like things about neutralizing stomach acids you could learn through this frog and i'm like don't 
bring it back just to meddle with the frog and like <laughs> learn about its tummy. Like bring it back so it can get on with its day doing its froggy things. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, it's, it's a difficult one, isn't it? Because I can see the benefits for humanity yeah. but yeah. at the expense of experimenting on frogs that are extinct. So yeah. The problem is as well, the ecosystem has moved on so much since these animals have gone extinct that if yeah. you were to they'd bring them to back, be... they'd have to be in captivity. Yeah. yeah. Or modified in some Yeah, or modified way. or you'd have to spend loads of money trying to reintroduce them then they might just get wiped out again. <laughs> so yeah, it's a whole thing. Or they could become like big sentient frog mutants and True. take over. True. You know? Put us in their tum tums. <gasps> yep, they could. Oh my gosh! Would you go Maybe to Jurassic Park it. if it was a real thing? Would you go? Hell yeah, I'd go. I think I would. Yeah, I would definitely go. Even with the risk of Jurassic Park happening. <laughs> yeah. More so. If I die, I die. <laughs> what a way to go! I want to. Yeah, it would be a great way to be eaten by a feathered T Rex. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I want it to be accurate. <laughs> <laughs> what about... I want it to be bird-like. Getting eaten off the toilet like that one fella, so... That would be me. That would suck. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That would suck, but still eaten by a dinosaur, which is pretty cool. Still a cool way to go. <laughs> It'd probably be quite quick as well, like a couple crunches, you're done. That's true. That is true. I wouldn't want to be spit in the face by that one that spat in that guy's face, though. That no, would suck. No, or like yeah. got by all the tiny, teeny, tiny ones, like just being. Oh, yeah. I'd just rather... Compsognathus. Oh. oh. Compsognathus. I'd rather just, you know, one big crunch, ham nam, gone, rather than death Not by a thousand nibbles. nibbles. Yeah. That'd be bad. I used to be obsessed with dinosaurs. So, yeah, I'm, I'm a firm yes. <laughs> I feel like everyone goes through what is it does everyone go through a dinosaur phase or does it just happen that we all went through dinosaur phases? I feel like it's a, a I feel fairly... like dinosaurs are brought up and yeah. then either you're on board and you learn a little bit about them or you're surrounded by people that are obsessed with them so you don't, you can't get away from it. Yeah. You just did you osmosis used to, all the information. Yeah. Did you used to get dinosaur magazine? Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. I did. It was this was like back in the days where if you had like a 3D picture, you had to have the like one red, one blue glasses <laughs> instead yeah, of these fancy yeah, yeah. new ones that you get. It was, you'd have like the dinosaur centerfold, not in a sexy way, and it would be 3D. <laughs> oh. You'd be like, whoa. Oh my. <laughs> Compromise T-Rex. <laughs> and you used to get like the, the slop together glow in the dark skeleton. Yes. Piece piece. Oh my god, yeah. All the wooden ones that you'd have to build. All the wooden ones. Oh, yeah. I had those. Those were great. Have you had any dreams about dinosaurs? Uh, I don't know that I have. I remember we had Oh, no, I did have one recently, didn't I? That I was in that restaurant and I went to leave it and I was suddenly crossing like, you know in um Fantasia where you get like the happy dinosaur bit, but then all of a sudden there's like the real volcanic, oh scary dinosaur bit. Mm -hmm. And I was crossing the scary bit and then I turned around and I was like, what am I doing? I'm still on the first level. And I just went back to the happy bit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. What's fascinating about Fantasia is they didn't know the meteors wiped them out. Really? So, oh. Yeah, so if you, they depict the, the volcanic and lava and the drought... Um, killing off the dinosaurs in Fantasia, but they just, they hadn't discovered the meteor yet. Oh, that's cool. When was that discovery made then? Because Fantasia... See, this is another thing that confuses me. Like, Disney movies, I think of them as being like the 80s and 90s. They're just timeless. Some of them are like yeah. the, the 40s, aren't they? They're like really... Fantasia came out in 1940. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, 1980, I think, is when, around that time... God, really? When the asteroid was proposed as a thing. Yeah. So it's quite recent. I don't think I could be a scientist that says that. I think I would doubt myself too much because I'd be like, I can't take I can't say it was a meteor. Everyone will laugh at me and point. Yeah, it's very, should, it I'll might just, be a meteor, but but you know, it might not be. Don't don't listen to me. I'm just yeah. put out there, guys. Yeah, just what do I know? <laughs> I think that's how a scientist should be. There shouldn't be any ego. 
you should just yeah. be willing to like change your mind based on facts, right? Yeah. I guess that's yeah. the thing is like we went through that phase of like Victorian science where they just said stuff with such gumption. They'd be like, yeah, we discovered this. This is a dinosaur that definitely existed. And really they've like stuck three dinosaurs together because they don't know. Oh, yeah. And they're just like, yeah, no, this is the like triple headosaurus uh, that I just <laughs> discovered. And everyone's like, oh, wow, cool. Yeah, that's, that's, oh, that's real. Good job. <laughs> I guess maybe we are a bit more... Um, Humble with our science these days. I think so. I think it needs like multiple scientists to nod and agree before they print or uh, present it. Yeah. Have we got three nodders? I think we're ready to present the triple headed <laughs> stegodon. <laughs> it's like the olden days where the. Uh... When you used to have the Colosseum and they'd wait to see if the person would give a thumbs up or thumbs down if you lived, but it's just with scientific nods. Yeah. Like, oh, sounds oh, cool, is, bro. Is it going to shake? <laughs> Hell just giving yeah, a little existed. nod. <laughs> like, my favorite one is the, um, oh, I always forget the name of it. What's the one with the thumbs? The Iguanodon, I think. When they first discovered that. Oh, and yes. they put the, the thumb on the nose because they were like, it wouldn't have thumbs. It must be a horn. It must, <laughs> it just... must have it on its nose. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just stuff like that. Oh. I like one of Don's. Oh. They're just happy. Love Always them. giving thumbs up. <laughs> hey. So, quick question about my dream. <laughs> yeah. Did I have a genuine premonition? Um. Should I start making this contraption with the seahorse thing? It depends. Like, did the... Did the seahorse... It sounds like it was quite sad about it. The seahorse kind of looked like it was... Yeah, it was trapped. But it was also like it was designed entirely for this. Like it was oh. meant to be there. Not like it was, it was like experimented on or anything. Oh, okay. It was just like, this is just what it was. Like I think the wire was even part of the seahorse. Oh. For example. Oh. And then we were just taking beads of liquid off of it to get sent to a different time. Was it like the... Because the, <laughs> the wire coming out, I was imagining one of those things, you know, when you've got to like... It's all wiggly and you've got to put the hoop over it and then if you touch the wire, it's like... <laughs> oh, yeah. it, literally, it literally looks like that. Oh, okay. For some reason, in the dream, because I was my granddad who made the discovery, he was like, this is absolutely part of the seahorse. Oh. Even though it looks like the electric hoop thing. <laughs> You sure he just didn't stick it on like an Iguanodon nose? It's always been there. Just, yeah, just, totally. Just, just, it's always been there. Yeah, I found it like Brand that. Brand new discovery. This is not any regular seahorse. There's no glue. Don't don't look at that. <laughs> don't look too <laughs> close. It's poisonous. That's not tape. See, part of me is curious because, okay, right. This is leaking someone else's dream. But you said about oh God, like... dream merging. The seahorse having like... Did you say they're like like little marble sized things coming off, like little things Beads that you would of eat? Liquid, yes. Yeah. So weirdly enough, yesterday, Rithian messaged us saying that he had had a dream, and in his dream, uh, hang on, let me see if I can yeah, find hang on, it. I'm going to find it too. It was like a seafood thing, and he said, uh, "Oh, you had this." Um, weird colourful abacus looking thing with small compartments and you slurped on them you got nutrition from the plankton in the water and I'm like that just sounds so like an abacus with beads and then this little like but it's oh, in yeah. the water and I'm like it just when you were describing it I was like why is this so strangely similar to like oh my God. Life? it is a premonition Oh my god! Yeah. We need to start ingesting strange liquids from the sea. We do. I think. <laughs> yeah, I think that's <laughs> until that's what we get sent this. back in time. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, if, like in the beginning, we sort of came from the sea. Maybe it's time we return. It's time Maybe to that's come back. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay, uh, it's time. The big like Lord. What's the <laughs> What's the name of the guy from the Scientology books? <laughs> Who's the big? The the guy oh, that they like Z, uh, it begins with an X, doesn't it? Um, yeah, Zenu. Like, Zenu, yeah, he's he's telling us it's time to return to the water now. <laughs> <laughs> your spirits are not yours; they're from an ancient like 
crazy alien race that went into your volcanoes. It's time to yeah. give them back. And those of you who who eat nutrients of the sea beads, you will be spared. You will be allowed to yeah. thrive. Just drink the Kool Aid. Okay. <laughs> It's Honestly, a sign that you my, should start a cult. Like, compared, compared to Scientology and Hubbard's like explanation of life, I don't think yeah. my dream's too far fetched. I reckon I could start a religion of my own. <laughs> yeah, I, I reckon you could found something on that. You know, the whole time travel and we worship a civilization that went extinct before our own. That had really good PCs. Just trying, they had way better tech than us, yeah. and we're just trying to get yeah. back to that. I keep thinking of those. Um, I don't know if you get them anymore, but do you remember, like, before bath bombs were a thing, you used to get, like, bath jellies. They'd be, like, little <gasps> yeah. marble-shaped things. The full little of soap, jelly balls. And they looked really tasty. I love those. You shouldn't eat them. I don't think them. I've ever seen those. Really? They were really big in, like, the 90s, the early 2000s. They were, like, a jelly ball. that Kind of like uh, when you get popping boba. Um, yeah. It, they were like oh, that. Oh, And you yes. pop them in a bath yeah, and I'm they would just now. sort of go blit and... I think my mum had some, yeah. We always used to get those in like um, party bags. It yeah. would be those and those flannels that were crushed into a shape that you could then <laughs> soak and they would turn into a flannel. Oh, yeah. It's like I someone had just those. raided a Claire's accessories and put it in a party bag. <laughs> a slice of cake <laughs> yeah. wrapped in a napkin and a bendy oh straw. Oh, my God. <laughs> Off you go. Stop sending me back. I've already been flung back into the past <laughs> once. <laughs> Don't I miss this again. having party bags. That was why did we stop doing that? Party bags were the best. That and lucky bags. Do you remember getting lucky bags as a kid? Oh my god, oh, lucky bags! Are so good. Lucky bags. That's not a thing what anymore. Were lucky bags. Huh? I don't. I don't think I had one. What's a lucky bag? You never had a lucky bag. No. They were like oh uh, a thing you could get from the shop, uh, and you, you'd pay like a pound for them, and it would be like an A4 size probably because it would have like a puzzle sheet in it's it like usually. An A4 jiffy bag essentially. Yeah, and it would have like those little mazes with the tiny ball bearings in them, or some rubbers or pens, uh, like coloring pencils, a lollipop, um, and it would just yeah, it would just have random stuff in it, and it would just be a lucky bag. And they'd come in like different, like different cartoons and stuff. Like you could get, a, I don't know, Ed, Ed and Eddie lucky bag or whatever. Powerpuff Girls. Oh my god, what a cartoon! What a cartoon! Um, <laughs> I'm just looking at the image that was on all the lucky bags, and it had a turtle on it. Do you remember the turtle? And it was on a rocket. It was oh like a yellow yeah. Lucky bag. yeah, 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 yeah. I didn't Dick know turtle. on the rocket it said it said Dick Turtle. <laughs> I had no idea. <laughs> oh, I forgot about those ones. Those were like the OG lucky bags. Dick Turtle lucky bag. <laughs> That's the ones I used to get. <laughs> oh my God. I Dick Turtle. I have never seen these before. Really? Oh I think gosh. I would remember Dick Turtle. <laughs> <laughs> I think I would as well. But apparently not. Maybe I just blanked it. For good reason. It does say giant size. Dick Turtle. Yeah, you they can were big get... ones. You get sealed bag still? Could we do an, an unboxing oh, of imagine. a lucky bag? Let me, just, let me check eBay. Someone's probably scalping the Dick Turtle lucky bags. Yeah, I used to get like colouring books in it, stickers and things like that. Quite like really cheap stuff. Crayons. It sort of reminds me of um, when I was very little, I had a birthday party at the Beef Eater. And oh, yeah. despite being a vegetarian child... <laughs> <laughs> um, and it was all like Charlie Chalk themed. Yes. So I got like a little mm -hmm. Charlie Chalk goodie bag and stuff like that and a badge. Ah, uh, yes. Yeah. That guy. You sound like you have beef with Charlie Chalk. Oh, yes. Charlie Chalk. I remember Charlie him well. His wacky way of walking. <laughs> <laughs> He's just freaky looking. Yeah. I, I, there's, there's a lot of that era of like children's shows which freak me out. Yeah, it's like I watched The Goonies for the first time last night and I was scared to watch it because something about the 80s can sometimes scare me. Yeah, <laughs> it's like the aesthetic, right? Yeah. Of some of the special effects and things and the way it's portrayed and the tone. Mm. It's just a bit off. A yeah. Bit yeah. Like sometimes it's not squeaky clean. stuff can be a bit like creepy in a way that I can't put words to. Yeah. Yeah. I like I totally can't watch um, 
like dark crystal never seen it terrifies me that is freaky is it the puppets it's the yeah. puppets. or like animatronics is that what what gets you I think it is the puppets kind of like labyrinth as well right Ooh. yeah similar Ooh, yeah. like just creepy Muppets fine puppets uh 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 Muppets Jim are, Henson are crossed a line yeah, yeah. Um, Jim Henson oh. got it right then he just veered off into making labyrinths <laughs> Because yeah. I tried watching um, Never Ending Story and I was fine until the puppet showed up and then I was like, no, I'm done. No, <laughs> my gut is telling me to leave now. <laughs> <laughs> I've had a look. I can't find anywhere selling lucky bags online. No. Damn it. So upset. It's well, not maybe. I think a niche in the market yeah. for us to start a new business. Maybe that's what your dream was telling you. <gasps> you should start a new... Lucky bag. Bring back Dick Turtle. Yes. The quest for okay. Dick Turtle. This is it. That's a great name for a book. <laughs> the quest for Dick Turtle. Oh my gosh. Make it happen. Um, did you, like, when you woke up from this dream, because when did you have it? Was it like a few months ago? Yeah. It's quite a while ago now. 24th you... of February. Oh, okay. I've Do got you it on remember, my note. Did you have any, like, like, what was your feeling? Were you just like, huh, that was weird? Or did you feel, like, connected to any particular part of, like, oh, I, like, this feels like a, like, did any of it feel like it had meaning or was it just, like, oh, this is weird? I woke up and felt like I was still in that state of, I've discovered something very important. I need to yeah. write this down. Mm hmm like there was an ancient civilization i've have evidence now i've been there <laughs> uh so i started writing it down and as i was writing i was like oh i'm i'm still dreaming a little bit <laughs> yeah um, and after that it was just the connection with my granddad i guess was like the main takeaway yeah of like wow we had so much in common and he had this whole different life what does that mean why is my brain telling me this um which i found fascinating I had a look up of what it means to dream of seahorses and it says it signifies the strength of your instinct and intuition. So oh. you should go for it. Yeah. It means you All right. need to act on these big discoveries. Damn. Yeah. I'm going to Egypt, guys. Hell I'm yeah. just going on booking.com, <laughs> see if I can get a flight. Nice. Off to Egypt and then maybe Napoli afterwards. Or yeah, Naples. I hear they have Naples. good chairs. <laughs> I mean, I feel like the chairs, were they like hard wooden chairs with soft cushions or were they cushiony chairs? Like big plush armchairs Ooh. that were very eccentric with elaborate velvet cover and strange covers, which were both extremely old fashioned, but also very quirky. Yeah. That's what I wrote. Oh, I feel but like Very unique looking. an association between, I don't maybe this is just me. But when I think of my granddads, I do think of the chairs they used to sit in. Because like, maybe it was just a granddad thing that they used to have like a chair that was their chair. Yeah, yeah. My granddad was in a chair all the time. Yeah. yeah. And you'd always see him in it. Yeah. Same. There just seems to be this like granddad chair link. Connection, um, yeah. Mm -hmm. For sure. I remember, this is just giving me the weirdest mem memory, but I remember watching this video this like vhs when i was in primary school and it was about a boy who got sent back in time to what? it was like in i guess it must have been like victorian era or something but he goes and lives with his family and he goes and sits in the dad's chair and everyone's like oh you can't sit in dad's chair it'd be so angry and then the dad comes in and he was just like okay i'll get out the chair that's the only bit of the video i remember <laughs> their chair they've worked yeah. it in yes do people still have chairs do people have chairs that are their chairs anymore i Is think that... so i think so my my nan still does bless her but it's like the the royal family like that old sitcom they had their chairs that they sat in i think it's just... i think it takes years of like Butt development groove. right mm. to like go through crap chairs try out different sofas have an ikea one for a bit uh, and then you mold your chair 
And by the time you're like elderly, you've really refined your chair selection. And this is <laughs> yeah. your chair now. And no one else is taking this chair. Like Fraser's you've been through dad. every other chair. Well, thank you so much for sharing your dream with yeah, us. I'm glad we was... finally got to hear it. It's such a adventure. It was. I'll see if there's a sequel sometime. Oh. And I'll let you know. If you were going to get back into this dream, which era would you explore more? Would you go present time hanging out with granddad fun times on the plane? Would you go back in time or would you go back to the future? Palmy wants to go back to the future, but it was terrifying as well as like, oh my God, it's crazy. But then again, I think I want to go into my, my granddad's Nathan Drake era, like <laughs> roaming Egypt, discovering yeah. these cool things. Going on an adventure with him, that sounds amazing. So I'd probably yeah. do that bit. So it's like half back in time. Not all the way back to ancient civilization, but like to my granddad's youth. Mm -hmm. Would be pretty cool. Do you think do you think the internet has deprived um our future generations of any sort of like mystery and wonder as to what we got up to as children? Because they can literally just look at our you know, instead of going through like photo albums, they can just check Instagram and scroll back for a while, <laughs> see what we were doing. That's true. But then again, if they're anything like me, which obviously I'm not that generation, I'm so bad at taking photos and then post them online that so much of my life is not online. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because of laziness and low effort. So <laughs> I still think there's plenty of people out there that haven't got their whole lives online. Yeah. Yeah. There's, I think still got lots of wonder. With like, Zoomers, isn't there a whole thing where they're not really that computer literate? They just sort of have their phones. So it's kind of gone the other way now. They can't sit there and Google everything. They don't know how. <laughs> uh, yeah. I mean, it's like cars, right? Like Most of us don't know how they're put together and how they work. Like a lot of our generation at least understands how PCs are made yeah. and put together and how they function. We can kind of troubleshoot. And then obviously the generation older than us was a bit too late to the game. Um, for PCs it was like a little bit too new and crazy mm -hmm. we grew up with it um, so yeah, yeah exactly I think we we're just lucky I guess yeah well, I guess with cars like back in the day people would have understood like the mechanic side of things whereas now so yeah. much of it is electronics that it's just like I don't know how like you have to take it into the, the shop yeah, a lot for more. two reasons one's like the technology's advanced so much and it's so safe now, you don't have to worry about it breaking down all the time and fixing it. And the other one is all the proprietary tech of these companies wanting to lock down their tech so only their engineers can fix it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's a catch-22. But yeah, I, I reckon tech has got so good that the generations below us don't need to worry about how it works and functions or how to use it effectively. Yeah. <laughs> this is how it happens. They it stop questioning it and then the robots take over and then <laughs> yeah and just then let them everything that happened in your dream will happen again no oh, we could be that civilization oh my god it goes extinct oh my uh -oh. god see i finished mass effect one yesterday so this is all feeling very real as well <laughs> yeah. yeah great game so good yeah. she was like i finished mass effect one nobody kissed me i was like you gotta work for those kisses I'm used to Baldur's yeah. Gate 3, like I show up and everyone wants me. Yeah, and I'm no, like, they're really what? playing the long game in Mass Effect. I have to have to get to know you. <laughs> what? <laughs> unless unless you get with Caden, who's a slut. He's True. a real yeah. you just oh, ask him for yeah. it, but no one wants him. No. Really. He, Who in their right mind? He like he full on <laughs> no. gailed me at one point and I was like, Did No, he? I've fallen for this once, I'm not falling for it again. <laughs> Yeah, Kayla's not worth it. But you wait till Mass Effect 2, then you get some real options. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. Stay away okay. from my boy, Garrus. <laughs> <laughs> Garrus is everyone's boy. No, this is mine. <laughs> He's such a he little himbo. <laughs> is he a himbo or does he just come across like a himbo when I'm playing? Oh, I don't know. Is he... He's pretty smart. Yeah, he's oh, a okay. smart boy. He's pretty switched on. He's just, I think there's just things that his character keeps, I, I guess it's the way it's programmed with his dialogue, but the things he's doing and the things he's saying just keep on not lighting up. And I'm like, is he just uh, a little bit, little bit dumb? Not really <laughs> connecting the dots, is he? He's just him. shy. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Yeah, great. 
enjoy that franchise. Yeah, it's I'm gonna so get to Dream Man again. Hell nice. yeah. Um, where uh, I can... got a question. Oh. Before you do that, yeah. Are you guys now the go-to oracles of dream stories, and are you subject to the thing that put me off dreams? <laughs> yes. You just yes, get people but... telling you their dreams all the time now. I do like when we started this podcast. I just thought dreams are funny little things. I don't really think about them at all. And now since we've been doing it, I'm fascinated. And like oh, people will sort okay. of jokingly be like, oh, I had a dream about this. And I'll immediately be like, oh, it must be this or this. Yeah. Or maybe it's this. Or are you going through this at the moment? And it's just like, oh, oh no. So I think they're immediately I, full of regret. Yeah. It's just like, oh, yeah. you dreamt yeah. about this. That means you're horribly anxious. This, oh, you're going through bad things at work. Blah, blah, blah. And then they don't, they don't tell you any more dreams. So. <laughs> It's okay. Yeah. Anxiety. I that <laughs> yeah. Okay. Good to know. But yeah, no, I do. I do love it. Yeah, um, it's really good. interesting. It's a good way to like just sort of sit there and reflect back on like things you've been thinking of or may not necessarily have realised you were thinking about. You know. So yeah, it's just a nice bit of self reflection and stuff. Great topic for small talk. Yeah. Exactly. You get to yeah. know people without fully having to divulge your entire life story, you can kind of do it in like abstract terms, mm -hmm. talking Although, about crazy dreams. Eggs. I think I am like so tuned in to what some of my dream things will mean now that as I start telling people about them, I suddenly think like, oh God, I've just realized what this means and I've revealed too much. They're probably blissfully unaware. Yeah. Whereas I'm like, oh no, abort, abort. <laughs> <laughs> I've said too much. <laughs> <laughs> We're all blissfully unaware, don't worry. Not many take a podcast and learn about dreams, so. <laughs> I do still just have weird dreams, usually involving just like, I don't know, the two themes seem to be like walking around without much care for nudity and the moon being really big and the world is possibly about to end. Huh. But oh, wow. Oh, world ending dreams just, lately. Yeah. I feel like they go hand in hand, though. Like, who wouldn't be fully naked if you knew the moon was coming? You know? <laughs> yeah, just like okay may as well <laughs> who cares <Fuck> anymore <laughs> let's break all the norms yeah um where can people find you so Not i your live house. in bristol no no <laughs> oh. no <laughs> okay uh i do high rollers and hat films so if you just search those two things you'll probably find those two channels so i do D, &D every sunday on twitch.tv slash highrollersdnd and then have films every day. Every day? Every day. There's a video every day on our YouTube. Oh my God. And you I can know. sometimes see them on the bus as well or are, they, are you not on a bus anymore? They're gone now, I'm afraid. Oh, I like seeing the bus. The bus has gone. Oh. Hey. I know. The amount of people in Bristol that noticed and told me about the bus ad is wild. It's very effective I... for local communities. <laughs> <laughs> I still have that thing because I remember where I was when I first saw one of the buses and now literally every time I'm in that one particular road it triggers that memory of Hat Films Bus you know when you like, two welcome. things just become linked in your mind forever yeah yep. like, this is where I saw Sorry the bus <laughs> yeah it's fun yeah. But yeah that's where you can find me nice 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 well Thank you so much for joining us yes, and telling us about you your so dream. Much. This was fun. I want to do it again. I need to have more dreams to note down. You do. Hopefully we'll have a sequel soon. Yeah, fingers crossed. Yeah. But anytime you want to come back, you are very, very welcome to. Yes, absolutely. Thank you. I'll stop avoiding it now. Yay. <laughs> <Good>. Yay. <laughs> well, Thanks a lot. This was real fun. Thank you for joining us. And thank you, Kirsty, as always. Thank you, Bryony. And thank you, Trot. And thank you, everyone, for listening. And until next time, bye-bye for now. Bye-bye.